It makes sense to me because of the nature of the Gospel of Mark. One of my seminary professors, he described Mark's Gospel, the way that Mark wrote his Gospel about Jesus. He told the tale of Jesus and all that Jesus did and what Jesus did with the disciples. And my seminary professor said, the Gospel of Mark is like an action movie. And I'm like, wow, it makes perfect sense that Mark Earl loved the Gospel of Mark because his life was like an action movie. I mean, no wonder that he loved it. Mark was constantly on the move. He loved to be active. I remember one day Mark and I were involved in an activity here at the church, and he began to tell me the story of how when he was in high school, he raced against Ben Johnson. And I was like, you mean Ben Johnson, the one-time fastest man on earth, and you raced against him. And Mark was, he was just, you know, it was routine for him, but I was like, wow, I know this, the guy who raced the guy, right? And it was just so cool to hear that story. And then Mark showed me the picture one day, and he was way behind Ben Johnson. But he, was, <laughs> he came at his very best. It's like an action movie, though, racing against Ben Johnson. Mark was truly a man in motion. A beautiful, breezy summer day a couple years ago, I was down by the yacht club, and uh, I was in my bow rider, and as usual, the engine was giving me problems. And here I was, and many of you are familiar with the waterfront there by the, by the yacht club. There's all kinds of rocks, and it was a windy day, and it was going to be one of those adventures of how am I going to get this crazy boat, and I'm going to have to get out, get on these rocks, haul this thing across. It was just going to be, it was going to take me a long, long time. And then I saw two kayakers coming. It was J.D. Van Allen, and it was Mark. And I knew I was rescued. I knew everything was going to be okay because Mark would drop anything. He would drop anything that he was doing to help you. How many of you have a Mark story where he dropped everything to help you? Just raise up your hand. All over this room, all over this auditorium, you have the same stories. And so I was rescued and I was saved. He would do anything to get you out of a jam. Many of you know that Mark just completed his training for, I believe, TIGSAR, Thousand Islands Ground Search and Rescue. And I saw you come today. God bless you. God bless you. He was the avid hiker with, is it trails and ales? Is there ales and trails? How's this go? Okay. <laughs> trails and ales. Or ales and trails. <laughs> Either way. <laughs> Paul and Shane, Roger and Michelle and others, God bless you. And uh, we can't imagine what it was like a week ago for you. We're praying for all of you. And we're grateful that you were there. Mark was involved, as Paul said, with the Legion. I'll never forget how he honored his father. Mark planned his dad's funeral. It took place right here on this very stage. And he wore his dad's uniform that day. He honored him. And it was a blessing. Mark was a geocacher. He became a great disc golfer. He kayaked. And Emily and Jacob told me their dad was both a concert enthusiast and a railroad enthusiast. And when they used the word enthusiast, it was just like, of course. Mark was enthusiastic. Anything he did, he was doing it with everything that he had. He was into concerts because he loved music and he knew his daughter loved music. And Emily did an amazing job today. Thank you so much. And he loved the railroad because it was just in his blood. It kind of was passed down through the generations of grandfather to father to Mark and now to Jacob. Jacob loves the railroad. A railroad enthusiast. And uh, Jacob has prepared the tribute that you're going to see uh, in just a few moments. Emily and Jacob, you were his best as we talked about the other day. And when Mark and I would talk together, when we would meet together, he couldn't wait to talk about you and your blessing to us. Let me give you a Mark Earl version of the scripture that I read from the Gospel of Mark. Let the teenagers come to me, and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. 
Mark impacted the lives of so many teens uh, in our church. And not only in the church, but also in the community. Uh, I think it's because he was able to keep up with them, actually. <laughs> and he cared. He was passionate to serve and to make a difference. And his family asked me specifically to talk about his work with the teens. Here's what teens said about Mark. Nicholas said, I would like to say goodbye. I say goodbye to someone who can easily be described as a Sea Road youth legend. <laughs> Mark Earl. Emily, uh, who has graduated and lives in another city, this is what she said. She said, he was a big supporter of my dreams. Uh, I had a childhood dream to become an actress. A lot of people discouraged me, but Mark always made an effort to cheer me on and to come out to my plays. I haven't seen him in several years, but he was a massive inspiration, and he helped me through some very tough times. This is what Brett wrote. Brett said, Mark meant so much to me as he did to everyone he knew. My sincere sympathy goes out to his family. He was one of the reasons I'm now a Christian today. He was even right there to congratulate me when I got directly out of the baptism pool. He truly was a great guy that I will never forget. Lauren wrote, he taught me so much about loving and serving the Lord and the community. My heart aches from the loss and prayers go out to his family and friends. Everyone who knew him had their life impacted in some way by him. He will be missed by many. My prayer is that his legacy will live on and remind us every day to love and care for others deeply, just as he did. And Davey wrote this, he said, I'm deeply saddened by the loss of this great man. Mark, you taught me a lot over the years. You were always there to listen and to lead by example. Thank you for loving Jesus and being an example of him. Thank you for investing in my life. You're my friend. And you will not easily be forgotten. All four of my children grew up with Mark <laughs> serving in the youth group. And uh, they grew up with Jacob and Emily and their brother and sisters to them. And uh, uh, my son, uh, I think, summed it up with Mark, and he wrote this. He says, I think I would share the moments that he took time to organize the youth sports events at the church. As a shy kid, I really appreciated the chances to go out and just play. That was Mark. He wanted the kids to play. And he wanted the kids to come to know God. Listen to the way that Mark's gospel concludes the passage. Truly I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter into it. We all know how successful that Mark was in the adult world. And he was. He worked in a very stressful field uh, of mental health nursing. And he excelled. He was a professional and he took his training seriously. But we also know that even though he could do everything in the adult world, he was a big kid at heart, right? He was just a big kid. He never lost the love for new experiences and adventure. He even overcame his fear of heights, his kids were telling me, so that he could go skydiving for the first time. There's a woman in our church in her late 70s, and she said, Mark was going to take me skydiving. <laughs> Emily, you got to do that now, okay? Yeah, that's your job. <laughs> he loved not always having to act grown up. In this, Mark Earl understood Jesus and the kingdom. If you want to enter the kingdom of God, you have to have a sense of wonder. You have to have the ability to imagine and hope for a world where pain and loss and sorrow, where they don't exist anymore. Where there's laughter and fun and innocence. You have to accept that God the Father has a plan. And the plan is better than any plan that you could ever put together on your own. You have to come to the kingdom like a little child. I love the fact that the last thing Mike's hiking friends heard was his genuine laughter. 
I can imagine when you all fell back in the snow and you heard Mark's